for uh, assisting. We'll be talking to Peter Billingsley shortly. Ralphie from A Christmas Story. He's all grown up. You know that. Uh, in fact, they're celebrating the 40th anniversary of A Christmas Story. It came out 40 years ago next weekend. I had to look it up, November the 18th. And they're doing a fan expo. It's a fundraiser for the Greater Cleveland Film Commission. Gwen's old stomping grounds. And uh, so we're going to chop it up with Peter. Talking about that, whatever else is going on. But that is this weekend over at Public Hall. Go to clevelandfilm.com uh, for all the details on it. Cavs lose last night by a few. Still playing very inconsistently. Karis LeVert had a good night, but that was about it. Uh, they were in Oklahoma City. Played the Thunder 128 to 120. Was the final. Cavs are sitting at three and five right now. And uh, they will try to get one over on the Warriors. They beat them here at home. If they beat them again out there, that'd be a nice little one two punch against uh, Steph Curry and whoever else plays for that team. Who's still Iguodala retired, right? He's retired. You Who got, else? Um, you still got Draymond Green. Draymond you got Green. Clay Thompson. You got yeah. Andrew Wiggins. Was Clay Thompson here? Or no, uh, he was with Chris the Warriors. Paul? Yeah. Okay. No, Clay, Clay Thompson's been on the Warriors his entire career. The whole time. Okay. So we'll see if they can. They know how Steph Curry, they know how to, you know. Multiple guys hounding Curry. They know how to get him where they want him. So Cavs Warriors is, I'm sorry, not tomorrow night, Saturday night. That's an 8.30 tip-off. Late-ish, because it's West Coast. And then they'll head up the road and pl or head down the road. Sacramento, south of San Francisco. It's kind of west. I was going to say. They will head east, down sorry. the road and play the Kings on Monday night. And then they uh, are back here at home next Friday. So they're on the road for a minute. Anyway. Uh, Browns are on the road, too, this weekend. They're in Baltimore to play the who, Cody? Baltimore Ravens. More Ravens. And so that means it's a Cox Out pregame. I will meet you in Parma, back at the Parma Tavern. Love being there. We'll get going around noon on Sunday. We'll have prizes and all kinds of stuff. Be a good time. So mark that down. Sunday afternoon, I'll see you at the Parma Tavern. The SAG after strike is finally over, which means I can go back to work. Finally. After 118 days. Sitting around my clothes and garbage bags. Staring at the walls. <laughs> Sleeping till 8.30. Not a care in the world. Still looking for my purpose. Still trying to find my bliss. Now, they'll be doing that. They signed a three-year deal. So they'll be doing this again before you even know it. But that Fran Drescher, boy, there's nothing she can't do. She was a nanny. She was a... Uh, sexual assault survivor. You ever read that Fran Drescher story, by the way? Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. What happened? Her and her husband got... There were home intruders. This is 40 years ago, maybe. She and her husband, uh, somebody breaks into their house, one or two guys or something, ties them both up, rapes her. The husband's, like, tied up. He can't do anything. It's just this awful, awful story. Ugh. And they stay together for a while, but I think it eventually, I don't think they could get, get past it. I think they eventually got divorced, but it's just a brutal story. But anyway, Fran Drescher is, of course, the head of SAG-AFTRA, of which I am a member. But this didn't affect me because they were striking against the American uh, motion picture and television producers. So it was people who were working in that uh, community. But after 118 days... Uh, they got back to work at night last night. May because this whole argument for people who really weren't keeping their ear to the ground on this was over the future of technology, really. You know, because the studios want to, like, have it in actors' contracts that they can just scan them when they're working on something and they just use their image in perpetuity. And obviously, actors, 99% of whom are not even close to being millionaires, most actors are not George Clooney and Brad Pitt. Most of them are just trying to work. And so the argument or the negotiation was over things like participation in streaming revenues because they haven't been getting that either. And, um, you know, 
uh, compromises over AI and things like that. So anyway, SAG-AFTRA, it sounds like they got what they wanted, but it was 118 days. And so, you know, because these streamers all claim poverty. On the one hand, for shareholders, you know, they show them how they're just making money hand over fist. But they have, this was a bad time for a strike, all things being told, because the streaming services have all kind of plateaued. I mean, I know Disney is still growing their subscription, but Disney and Hulu are going to merge next spring. So you're not going to need two apps. If you have either Disney or Hulu, it's going to be combined into one thing. Is it going to be Hulu Plus or Disney? Lulu? I hope it's Dejulu. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's good. It's not delivery. It's Dejulu. <laughs> Plus. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what it's going to be called. But that's happening next spring. So the streaming services would cry poverty anytime the actors, you know, wanted a cut of the work they were doing, other than just getting paid for. They were like, yeah, you're. Because residuals are pretty much a thing of the past with streaming. Used to be, you know, you'd get a check every time your show aired or every time, you know. But residuals really went away with streaming services. So it's been 118 days. Uh, there are a handful of films that said we're getting right back to work because there were a lot of things that were in production that shut down immediately once the strike was like big, you know, tentpole productions that had to shut down. Like Deadpool 3, they're like, we got to shut it all down. You know, there were literally some, there was set photos from like they had just started shooting and you saw Wolverine in his comic ac accurate uh, costume finally. And then they're like, oh, shutting it all down like two days later. And conversely, there were other productions that were like two weeks away from being done. So that must have been equally frustrating. Right. Either you just get something going and you're shut down or you're almost done. Because there were plenty of movies that finished before the strike and they were like, whew, we can, we can go edit it, put it out. So Gladiator 2, Beetlejuice 2 is going to be back up and running. Venom 3, for people who care about that. So uh, all these productions are getting back up and running. I can't see it being easy, though. You know, this is kind of like the equivalent of a showbiz pandemic when everybody's just at home and not doing anything. You don't just, like, flip the switch and everybody's back to work because you're going to have people that have lost months of work and then you're going to have to get everybody back on, like, production schedules and you know crew members who may or may not be available because they went to go work on because like game shows and variety shows were exempt from all this so things like you know jeopardy that was mm -hmm. re during the writer's strike you know jeopardy was reusing old questions because the writers were on strike so like variety shows reality shows those things were all exempt but I just don't know why they don't do this from the jump. You know you're eventually going to come to a, a solution. You know you're eventually, in any union striking situation between management and the union, in any capacity, not just Hollywood, whether you're a welder or a pipe fitter or, or, or a auto worker, you know you're eventually going to come to a solution. I don't know why they can't figure it out before 118 days. But they did figure it out. Because they want to see how much someone's willing to give. Yeah. Both sides are. No, I understand. And because I mean, the, the studios, you know, they were like, oh, we're just going to we're just gonna wait until people have to sell their houses. They, they figured they would just put everybody in the poorhouse. But that's not sustainable either. So it can't just be an ego thing. I mean, that's largely what it is. Well, you're the one that says corporations, are, the only job a corporation has is to make money. So if they can milk... The, the but you're not going to make money work. if you don't have that. That's what I mean by and not sustainable. You can milk that for a little bit, but if you don't have new content because you don't want to pay actors well, or producers or crew or anything, you're not going to have a system anymore. But on the worker that's side. That's why they want to use AI. So they're like, screw you guys. We don't need people anymore. We'll just scan a crowd and then those will be our extras in perpetuity. Well, So I understand. Listen, I understand where they're coming from. That'd be great. If they had the, if they could get the Coxbot 5000 in here, they'd have it in here tomorrow. Make no mistake. I thought I ordered something like that offline one time. Yeah. Wasn't that great? Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Chef doesn't recommend? Yeah, I sent it back. Uh huh. I, I don't know if it's sitting on someone else's shelf. In discreet right packaging? You could send it back after you use it? I, I imagine. Ugh. You have to like, do you have to soak it in bleach or what do you do? I didn't. Ugh. And
and it didn't come in discreet packaging either. It was it's it was like, emblazoned oh, with giant red letters. They wanted everyone to know. <laughs> Cox <Cut, tuck. laughs> Coxbot five thousand just showed up right in the lobby when I was walking out there. I said, "Oh, there it is." Your landlord got the delivery right on her ring camera, which is another product that you can buy. Be very careful if you're on an adult site and you buy a ring camera. That is very different from uh, the one that most people have surveilling their front door. And, and with all the videos I've seen on, like, a ring camera now, I feel like it's just people watching at this point. It's, it's the voyeuristic nature of people now because a lot of times you don't even need it. for it, Like, not everyone is walking up to your door. Like, you're, you're filming people as they walk past your house or, like, uh, in their yard. Like, if it's pointing towards, you know, the street. So I feel like people just are bored and they want to see. I, I know I have friends that have a ring camera and they can pull it up at any point and they, they can just put it on their app and just watch. I'm like, what are you doing? Just watching your ring cam. Um, and then they have one inside to harass their dog because they can talk to it and the dog's going nuts because they hear your voice, but they don't see you. I had to consult my ring camera footage this morning because I got up and I opened the blinds in our bedroom. I'm looking out. You know, taking in the morning. And I notice that all the leaves from my front yard are on a pile by the curb. And I go, well, I didn't do that. What's going on? Gwen thought I had done that. I said, when did I have time to rake the leaves into a pot? You've been here all week with me. When did I? She goes, I, don't know. I just thought, because I had mowed the lawn last weekend, and that sucks up a lot of those initial leaves, but they're still falling. So I go to the ring camera. I go, what the hell? And there's a guy on a machine in my front yard going back and forth, sucking up the leaves that is and depositing them, stuff. depositing them. Well, I didn't hire anybody. Depositing them in a pile. It's complimentary for your gated community. Do you know two things wrong with that, all right? There are no compliments where I live. You have an HOA? No. Mm. I'm not in a gated community. Mm. I live in a suburb. I, I'm not behind gates. All the taxes and... Well, that's stuff. a different thing altogether. I ain't getting... Listen, you're lucky to get the garbage picked up where I live. Shut up, There Alan. ain't no... So what do you mean they're not picking up your garbage? I said you're lucky to get the garbage picked up. Okay. What I'm saying is there is no service where somebody comes around and... Now, full disclosure, once you get your leaves on the curb, there is a truck that drives around and sucks them up. I will say that. Now, I don't know how uncommon that is. There are probably a lot of municipalities that might have a truck. That I think would, the the leaf sucking truck is kind of a standard thing. Okay, now. that's what. Okay, so I that's you had to put them in a bag. That's, that's not even. Well, some people do. The, but some it, places you got the. So they they only do the leaf sucking truck, <laughs> <laughs> like once, <laughs> like once or twice a year. Like it's like there's certain days when they're like, all right, get your leaves out there. We'll bring the truck by. We'll suck them up. And it'll be fine. Well, apparently but, ours is always driving around. Okay. It's well, just that they're in. Village and, maybe yeah. so. So anyway, so I'm on the ring camera, and I'm showing Gwen. She goes, you know who that is. It's a buddy of ours that kind of moonlights doing some lawn stuff. And I text him. I go, hey, did you suck all my leaves up and put them on the curb? And he's like, yeah. I was on my way back. And I figured, I was like, thank you, bro. It was very nice. And but I was I was perplexed for a second. Got, I was like, wait a second. I didn't do that. You got leaf cucked. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yes. Yard, you got yard cooked. Right up. Well, when you leave the house, I'm just there to suck your leaves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, for a second, I thought it might be my next door neighbor because I was like, well, maybe because most of the leaves in my front yard are from his massive tree hanging over my front yard. I go, no, because he's on the road a lot. So I'm like, it wouldn't have been him. But so I consulted the ring cam. So for once, it was very useful. I was able to identify Something that had um, flummoxed me. Very useful. And I have to imagine that's why your landlord across the hall has hers. So she can see what's going on inside Casa Pound Cake. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I don't she, know what's up. She ain't going to see much. I mean, the first couple weeks she saw, and I was like, hey, well, it is what it is. I live on my own now. But Does she own the building or is she just like the super? I think she's the building manager. Okay. She's. I don't think she owns the building. But. Is that a property uh, management company that owns it? Yeah. Ah. Gotcha. No, there are no gates where I live. I mean, there. I know people who live in like, there's like a, there are like subdivisions in where I live and they're behind gates. Uh, but that's not, that's not where I live. 
Um, but yeah, it was it was very useful. Boy, Jenna has been on fire. We get calls from this girl, Jenna, who lives out in Poland, Ohio. And most of the time, very frequently, easily 90% of the time, she'll leave a, a voicemail on the after hours line. But it's just her growling. She's like, I, you know, I don't know if it's her medications or what it is. But it's a lot of that constantly. Last couple of days, she's been uh, dropping all kinds of nuggets on us. It's time for Sweet Nothings with Jenna from Poland. You know, I better not sing any Taylor Swift songs today because now they're saying she's so satanic and evil. <laughs> this has been Sweet Nothings with Jenna from Poland. Yeah, because I played that clip of that uh, strip mall preacher who said that Taylor Swift is doing satanic rituals in her dances. Which I have to assume either he's completely making that up or that's part of her appeal. You know, she looks so sweet and innocent, but on stage, secret Illuminati satanic rituals. But you can't prove him wrong, though. You can't prove him wrong? I imagine you could ask Taylor Swift, hey, are you incorporating secret satanic rituals into your dance moves? And she'd look at you like, you know, you had a nipple in your forehead and then you go, oh, it's some guy said... Uh, but, like, even if she said yes, you guys would be like, ha, 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 oh, it's just Taylor. She's such a kidder. And then, meanwhile, you walk away, and she turns around like the eyes in Thriller, <laughs> like Michael Jackson. <laughs> it's yellow eyes. <laughs> she's got claws. She's a lizard person. Uh-huh. No, maybe she is. She's still hella talented and cute to boot. Emphasis on the hell. <laughs> I guess it's put the hell in hella talented. Hell, uh, talented. Uh-huh. Oh, by the way, um, I don't, I, I never was able to confirm it, but I did get a message uh, that Gaylord out in Wellington who calls us pretty frequently is in the hospital. Oh, no. He just had his 69th birthday last Friday. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, nice. Son nice. Of a nice. Bitch. Oh. I want better circumstances, but nice <laughs> until we know more. Yeah, so I don't know. Uh, his his daughter called the show last week, wanted to wish her dad a happy birthday. And, you know, obviously it, because Gaylord has uh, some issues with his speech, he speaks very slowly, and that drives some members of our audience crazy. But he's a big fan of the show, and boy, that's all I need in someone's personality to put them on my radar. If you're a big fan of this show, I'm a cheap date. So if that's uh, the case, we hope that um, he's doing okay and he'll be um, hearing uh, from him soon. I don't know. I got a break here. We're going to talk to Peter Billingsley on the way back. He is uh, Ralphie from Christmas Story. You know who he is. And he's in town for this fan expo. It's 40th anniversary of A Christmas Story, and they're doing a weekend-long thing over there for the Greater Cleveland Film Commission, a public hall. So we'll talk to him on the way back. I'll have another $1,000 for you, courtesy of the buzzard bookie. So listen for that keyword coming up to win the money and those Green Day tickets right after the break. Now, coming to Cleveland, we'll send you to Pittsburgh to see him next fall. The Alan Cox Show. On our free iHeartRadio app and your favorite smart device. Just tell it to play The Alan Cox Show on iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio Alter Ego 2024. Presented by Capital One. Sold out. Now your only way in is to win. Don't miss Paramore. The 1975. The Black Keys. 30 Seconds to Mars. Bush. Some 41. 